So as I'm sure you know, Kling is a new AI video generator that produces some pretty remarkable results. I've covered it a few times on the channel now, but thus far there's been a pretty major roadblock in that in order to access it, you needed a Chinese mobile phone number. Well, I am glad to say we now have a workaround and it's one that weirdly is endorsed by Kling. So yes, you can now start generating for free. Well, for free for now at least. And I'll also go through a bit of a tutorial on the platform itself because, well, uh, you'll see. All right, woman kai shiba, which apparently means let's get started in Chinese. We're gonna be learning a lot of Chinese today. So first off, we do have a few prerequisites. Uh, for one, you will need a phone. I am happy to say that this works on either iOS or Android. It's very rare that I get to make you know everybody happy. Although I am going to quickly lose that by making half of you mad because Kling is a mobile only app. There is no web UI. And listen, I get it. That is 100% not my preference either. Uh, that said, there are some advantages. We'll talk about that a little later. Second, you will need some sort of translation app unless you can read Mandarin, in which case, disregard. I've been using the ChatGPT app and that seems to be working really well, especially since you can upload screenshots to it. That said, I mean, the UI for Kling is pretty much a modern mobile app, you know, UI. So it's really not that hard and you can kind of just sort of figure it out by eyeballing it. Finally, not a prerequisite, but I do feel obligated to say this. Uh, look, Kling is a Chinese based mobile app. You may live in a country where you will be blocked from downloading it. I, I can't help with that. Okay, prerequisites and disclaimers. I the way, let's get started. So this roadmap comes to us via Tile over on Twitter. Um, weirdly, the whole thing came about because Kling reached out to me and said, try Kling. And I said, okay, give me access. And then they just sent me this. That said, when I fired the app up, I apparently already had access. I totally had blanked on the fact that I signed up for Kling on like day one. So I did end up going a different route to get access than what I'm going to outline here. Although I will make note of when the paths diverge. You can try both or maybe like a combination of them, we're kind of in open water here. So first, you'll want to download the QuiCut app. You can find this either in the Google Play Store or on the Apple App Store. So once you've downloaded the app, obviously open it and uh, you'll be prompted with a login. I just used my Apple ID login and that seemed to work fine. Now here's where we have our first divergence in my experience versus what Tile says to do. According to him, you'll need to download another app called Kwai Shu, I believe it is, uh, and create an account there. This is kind of a TikTok clone, but it does tie to your Kwai Cut account as a user profile. And as a note, during the sign up, this does accept a Western phone number, not just US either. There's a drop down there that accepts a number of other country codes as well. Now, again, I didn't actually do this step when I initially signed up. So I don't know, maybe try first doing it without it. And then if that doesn't work, you could circle back and download this app. So from here, we're heading back over to Kwai Cut. So now you're gonna to wanna to hit the second tab on the top row. As a note, you may end up getting a pop-up ad that's happened to me a few times. It's, you know, standard pop-up ad, just kind of wait it out and then hit the X. From there, you'll end up on another screen that looks a little bit like this. Um, just click on the tile with the panda playing guitar and then hit the button that translates to application process. This will take you to a three-step questionnaire. It's very simple. Um, the first question is asking what your purpose of use is. The options are the first one is for content creation. The second Second one uh, is for material production. Uh, the third one says for work. The fourth one says for hobbies. And the fifth one says just out of curiosity. Uh, choose any one of them. I believe I just said for content creation. The second screen asks what your role is. The first option is independent media. The second one is designer. The third one is marketing personnel. The fourth is film and television industry practitioner. Uh, the fourth one is AI content enthusiast. And the fourth one is social media user. Oh, there is a fifth one that says uh, student. So uh, choose any one of those. If I recall correctly, I did the AI creation enthusiast. The third screen, which is asking for your contact information, this is where things get a little bit on the tricky side. Now, uh, the first box is for your phone number. Um, we're gonna circle back to that in one second. And then the second box is for your user ID. For the username, now again, I did not go the Kwai Shu route. Uh, if you did go that way, whatever username that was assigned there, you're gonna wanna put in here. Additionally, for the phone number, I just put in my normal US phone number and that seemed to work. Work. That has been reported by a few others 
on Twitter as well. Uh, I know that uh, Dustin Hollywood got access just putting in his regular US-based phone number as well. Now, I should note that when I put in my US phone number, it did come up with an error message that said, uh, please enter a correct mobile number, uh, but I just kept spamming it. And then eventually it was just like application submitted successfully. I was also supposed to get a message via my Kwai Shu account, which, you know, again, I did not download, uh, and an SMS uh, text message uh, that said, again, I, I never got either of these. But Tile has provided us with, you know, probably a more legitimate workaround solution uh, by giving us a website called SMS Online. So this provides us with uh, essentially a, you know, a kind of a, a burner temporary mobile Chinese phone number uh, that you can then provide Kling, you know, in the mobile number spot to receive an SMS text message with like a six digit code on it. Uh, definitely what you'll want to do is just, you know, there's no need to put in the plus 86 uh, number. That's the country code. You're already technically in the country. Uh, so uh, just, you know, highlight these numbers and uh, send that over as your mobile phone number. Uh, once you hit apply, you will end up uh, down here. You will end up getting a text message as Tile points out here. So that will be essentially the confirmation code for Clint. Thing. Tile does note that if the code does not show up in like a minute or two, just refresh the tab and eventually it will pop up. Once you've entered your verification code, you are basically on the wait list. It should take from what we're hearing about three to four business days before you, know, you have access. Obviously we'll begin by starting up the app. Um, again, this is another one of the ads that you will run across, obviously just X out of that. Getting past that ad, you will obviously be greeted by the home screen. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is head back to that second tab at the top. And once again, we'll be clicking on our friend, the Panda. This brings us to the Kling UI. Uh, the top section here is for text to video. Uh, if we hop over this way, we have image to video. Obviously here we have our prompt box. You are limited to 500 characters, although I have not come anywhere near that. Uh, then again, I'm also running through translation software. Uh, and then beneath that are prompt modifiers that you can add in uh, things like 8K, according to translation, uh, other uh, of these read night and wave. Um, again, I don't really mess with these. They do seem to change too. Below that, we have three different aspect ratios, and then underneath that, a number of sort of like preset prompts that you can try out. Again, prompting in English will not work here, although luckily we have uh, our friend ChatGPT or any other translation software that you might like to use. I do recommend using ChatGPT 4.0 only because, well, A, it is free, and B, because of the memory function, you know, once you get the conversation started, you can just type something in and it knows to translate it into Mandarin. So let's do a man in a blue suit talking on a phone, walking down a city street. Obviously what we're gonna do is simply copy this and then take it back over to Kling. Uh, this first tab is obviously paste. Once we have that, we simply hit the submit button down here and off it goes. So that's gonna take you over to the generations tab where obviously it is working in the background. Uh, you can tab out of this and go start another generation. So let's give that a shot. And we'll try a prompt that's something along the lines of a cinematic film of an alien spaceship over New York City. So in sort of a funny turn, our generation with our guy in the blue business suit talking on the phone came back as a guy in a blue business suit texting on his phone. So I don't know if this is a loss in translation kind of thing, or you know if this is just like the modern zeitgeist where no one talks on the phone anymore, we all just text anyways. But just judging this on its own, it, I mean, it looks pretty good. Uh, fingers look really pretty solid. I mean, obviously that is something that AI video struggles with quite a bit. Uh, we did get a man in a blue business suit and he is wearing a fairly expensive watch as well. We did run into some issues with our UFO prompt. I think, and I'm, I'm not entirely sure, hopefully somebody that can read Chinese can let me know, but I think the keyword of cinematic might have tripped it up a little bit because we're getting sort of like this black and white look. Take two of our man in a blue business suit yielded these results. Uh, I did modify the prompt to say that he was smiling. Uh, and yeah, this looks, I mean, this looks really good. Modifying our UFO prompt to modern sci-fi yielded this, which, you know, Kling definitely got the assignment here. Uh, you know, that blue exhaust definitely has the modern cinematic look to it. Uh, all it's missing is some JJ Abrams lens flare. Image to video is pretty wild as you're about to see. Um, so obviously you're gonna wanna move over to like the little picture icon tab over here that is image to video. Uh, and then you have this section here, which is, I, I presume it's upload photo. 
Hitting that takes us to this screen. Uh, I do have this as a previous generation that I ran. Uh, what you want to do is actually hit this button. That kicks us over to our photo roll. As you can see, I've been pretty busy here. So um, we're gonna take our cyberpunk gal here and then you want to come up to the top right here. Uh, I presume that's an ad, which will then kick you back to this screen in which we can see our gal here. Um, simply click on her, which will then bring us over to this screen. Uh, hit the red button at the bottom here. You'll see then that she's kind of masked at that point. Um, and then all you have to do is hit this button down here. Uh, you know, honestly, it, it very you get into a rhythm with this. It, it really does flow pretty quickly. So now our image is loaded and you can go one of two ways here. You can either just hit submit and Kling will kind of figure out something to do with it or you can text prompt it. So this was the output that came out when I prompted it. I think it was something along the lines of like woman walking, very simple prompt. Uh, from there, you can actually hit this button to extend the shot, or you can hit this button to do a re-roll. Uh, actually, not a re-roll, I should take that back. This just actually kicks you back to the main screen where you can re-prompt. Uh, so let's run an extension on this. And to note, when you run an extension, you will have to add another prompt to that extension. You can just copy paste the original prompt, if you will, if you're just looking to continue the action. So uh, yeah, we now have a nine second shot, by far probably one of the most impressive uh, video extensions that I've seen yet. It doesn't have any of those characteristics that typical video extenders do where, you know, our character goes super soft and the background, you know, goes blurry and out of focus. Granted, it's a little bit of a cheat here because she is walking to shadow. Uh, we're going to take a look at some other examples in just a minute. Can also add elements into an image to video and actually impressively so as well. So taking this mid journey image of a, I don't know, this is clearly a girl that's in a horror movie, but I have the, the leather jacket says she's fine final girl, so I think that she's definitely living to the end. So bringing that image into Kling and then issuing the prompt uh, monster in the background uh, yielded this as a result. I mean, that's that's pretty wild. Uh, she seems very nonchalant about the giant monster that's right behind her. Um, so then running an extension on this and then just continuing on with the same prompt yielded this as a result, which we are now up to a nine second shot. I mean, yes, you might nitpick and say that she's only like briskly jogging away from the giant monster behind her, but maybe she knows something that we don't. Things did start to get a little weird on the third extension. Uh, we're up to a 14 second shot. In Kling's defense, I did not give it any other direction, but just re-rolling the same prompt. But yeah, uh, around here, she just decides to turn around. We can't see her hands, but I'm pretty sure she's got a certain gesture for that monster. In terms of prompting, I'm really just kind of keeping things very simple. Uh, Kling seems very good at understanding contextually what you're looking for. Uh, like in this case, the prompt here is just simply talking and we're getting a lot of I mean, these solid acting coming out of this character. There's another one, kind of a preview of a project that's dropping next week that I think is actually gonna melt some faces. Uh, but the prompt here is simply scared. So best practices, in my opinion, if you're not fluent in writing Chinese, is to kind of just stick to action and emotion. Uh, again, Kling does seem to do a pretty good job of contextually understanding uh, a scene. And finally, once you have a generation that you like, all you have to do is hit the download button down here, and then it kicks back out to your camera roll. And listen, I know not everybody loves the entirely mobile workflow, but you know, to be honest, I've actually kind of come to really appreciate it. And obviously once it's on your camera roll, you can then kick it back out to your computer to do post-processing work. I did end up doing that with Monster Girl here where I you know, put a face swap on her, ran it through Topaz and did some color grading on it. Plus added a little bit of camera shake. And yeah, I mean, I think this looks really great. But yeah, I would definitely say that at least currently Kling is probably the best image to video model out there right now. And look, I know that the whole signup process is definitely going to be a bit of a hassle. Uh, I'm not going to be able to help all of you. So definitely please do try to help each other out in the comments if you have questions or if you know you run across an alternate path. In the meantime, Kanshi Guai Ken, which I believe means thank you for watching. My name is Tim.